This is the Ender 3 V3 SE from Creality. And I believe this is the last Ender 3 released from Creality with Marlin firmware, open source Marlin firmware. After that, they went to the Clipper and everything. And there's a lot of my viewers that have this printer, and it's actually a really nice Ender 3. And it's easy to upgrade, and that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to install the Micro Swiss Flowtech hot end on this Ender 3 V3 SE right here at Filament Friday. This video is brought to you by Micro Swiss. Micro Swiss now offers their Flowtech high flow, high temperature nozzle for the Creality Ender 3 V3 SE. So let me show you how to install one. In previous videos, I showed you how to install this on a K1C and also a K1 Max from Creality, and I've been really happy with the results. So when MicroSwiss gave me the opportunity to show you how to install it on this machine, I jumped at it because I want to update this so I can use the same nozzle on all these different machines. Now it does come with printed instructions and they're really good, but there's a few steps in here that can be gotchas. So I'm going to take you through this plus add a few extras that you may need to know. And it's actually really easy to do. All you really need is a screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver. You need some kind of clippers to pull off the glue on the connectors. You'll need a 2 millimeter Allen wrench, also a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench, and one of those gotchas. I recommend you also have a 1 16th inch Allen wrench. And I'll explain all that in step four. So let's get started installing this on the Ender 3 V3 SE. Step one and step two say to remove power, so we'll just unplug the cord, that way I can't get any power. And then there's three screws we need to remove to remove the shroud. One on the left side and two on the right side. And all of these take a two millimeter Allen wrench. So once you get those screws removed, this shroud will lift right off with your fingers. And you can shove it to the side. There's also a cable to remove right here on the bottom. There may be a little glue, maybe not on this one, and then you just pull it through behind the heatsink. Step three says to remove the probe bracket. That's the auto level bracket. And there's two screws to hold that in place. Again, a two millimeter Allen wrench takes these off, and then you can just pull the whole bracket assembly aside. There is glue on the connector. Just use some side cutters to grab that glue and pull it off, and then throw that away. And then you can pull this connector right out of its socket. Step four says to remove the hot end, but there's a catch here. So I'm going to show you a variation. The first step, though, is to remove the silicone sock that just pulls off. Now, their instructions say remove these two screws that hold the hot end. They're a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench socket. The problem is one of mine was a little too big. So the 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench just jumped. It would not loosen the screw. So I had to take alternative action. So I decided to just remove the extruder with these four screws. I think when you buy this thing, you assemble this with those four screws. So you're probably familiar with it. Lift that to the side, and now you can get to the two screws that hold the hot end assembly. Once we get this off, it's going to be a lot easier to work on anyway. So I think this is a better method than what their instructions show. So get this off. Now there are a couple connectors you got to take off. There's some hot glue you got to peel off. So there's this one for the thermistor, and then this bottom one down here for the fan. So then you can take those two connectors out. Just remember where you put them or watch this video again so you know where they go. And then there's also the heater element, which are these black wires on a bigger connector. So just pull that out. There was no hot glue on mine. And then this whole assembly is now off the machine and you can work on it much easier than their directions. Now at this point, I could easily get to and see the 1.5 millimeter screws. One side came out easily with a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench. But like I said, this other side, this, the socket in the screw was too big and this Allen wrench was jumping. But here's the trick. A 1 16th inch Allen wrench is actually 1.58 millimeters, which is just big enough to get this screw. You look at them, there's not a major difference, but when I put it in that screw head, it loosened it right up. So now I could get this screw out. I've seen this before on Creality machines. It's actually very common. That's how I knew this trick. So now I got both screws out. So now I just need to loosen up the grub screw here at the back. So you loosen that up and then this whole hot end assembly can slide out, which is what they show in their instructions. So now we're back on track. We can follow their instructions. 
Now we'll install the copper insert that they show in their instructions. Again, we're going to need the scrub screw, but put it back in. I probably shouldn't have taken it all the way out. There's two sides to this copper insert. There's a small hole and a larger hole. You want the larger hole to be seen from the top. So the smaller hole goes in, the larger hole stays out. Then you tighten the grub screw with a two millimeter Allen wrench and you're ready for the next step. Now we need to install the Flotec heater core. There's two new screws for holding the heater core. They look like this and you just hand screw one of them into place. The other one, you slide it onto the heater core into the slot like this, and then slide the other side onto the screw that you hand tightened into the assembly. Then you get it lined up into the heat sink, and then hold it with your thumb, and go grab a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench, and then tighten this thing until it bottoms out on the heat sink. And once you've done that, then you're going to go back to the other side and tighten the other screw. And make sure that the wires are facing the fan. It's very important here that they're facing out this way and not the side of the grub screw. It should look like this with the grub screw. Now we're going to install the nozzle and I forgot there is another tool you need a seven millimeter socket and ratchet. So by hand you can screw this almost all the way in and then you finish it off with a seven millimeter socket on a ratchet and just tighten it till it's snug, not super tight. Now you'll notice this thing is longer than the old assembly and we'll take care of that in future steps. But this looks really good. Now we just need to install the silicone sock that covers this whole thing. Slide it on over the screws, make sure it all snaps in place. And now this thing is ready to assemble back on the printer. This is an optional step I like to do on all Creality machines. Take the PTFE tubing and use a 3 16 bit and drill a little funnel into the top of this thing. It makes it easier to load filament sometimes. Slide that into the heat sink and now you can reinstall this with the two screws like we did before. Again, this is outside the instructions that they give you. I took this off to make it easier, but I swear this is so much easier than reaching around everything. Now we're ready to reconnect the connectors. There's a fan one socket on the board. Connect the fan to that. Then there's a heat socket, it says on the board. You put the heater element there. It's the only one that fits. And then there's a connector above that. That's for the thermistor, even though it doesn't really say that. Plug that in and now all the wires are set. Now we have to reinstall the extruder assembly. Remember this was outside their instructions. You slide this thing over the PTFE tubing into that little hole. It just slides over and then there's just the four screws that hold this in place. And like I said, I think when you buy one of these printers, you have to install this anyway. So it's not a big deal. Tighten those four screws and on to the next step. In step eight, we have to add a shim to the auto level sensor, and that's because this new hot end is actually taller than the old one. So you remove the two screws that hold the sensor to the bracket, slide in the 3D printed spacer, which is included in the kit. You don't have to print anything. And then you slide the two new screws, two longer screws that come in the kit as well, into the spacer and then screw those into the bracket. And then we just need to reinstall this opposite of what we did to remove it just tighten the two screws after we get these tight then we just need to install the connector and there's a slot for that it says cr touch that's the sensor so just plug that in and it's ready to go step nine is a new cooling duct because the hot end is longer once again we have to replace the cooling duct to something longer so there's two phillips screws on the fan inside the shroud that hold the cooling duct and just loosen those two screws with a Phillips screwdriver and it slides right out. Mine was 3D printed, I don't know if they all are, but the replacement is definitely 3D printed. It's included in the kit so you don't have to print nothing. And then you just tighten the two screws with the Phillips screwdriver and this thing's ready to install. Step 10 is to reinstall the shroud. But first we have to route the wire behind the heat sink and bring it into its little connector slot on the bottom of the board. From there then you just slide the shroud back over, tuck all the wires in, and then there's three screws. Remember there's two on one side and one on the other. So tighten the two on the right with the two millimeter Allen wrench and then one on the left 
and this thing is installed, ready to use. If everything went as expected, you should have a pile of leftover parts that looks like this. So now step 11 is to run the auto level, really just test this thing. So plug it back in, turn it on, and then in the menu go to the leveling menu, which you've done a million times on your own machine. And then it'll, of course, home itself and then go into the corner. And this is where it heats up the nozzle. And I'm looking at this on the camera now, and I have a lot of dust on my LCD I need to clean. But once it's heated up, then it'll do its cleaning process. It'll start flashing blue at nozzle cleaning. And then it'll start the Z offset where it does its taps and senses the Z offset. And if everything is connected right, this will be flawless. It'll just go through it like it did before. The hot end has really nothing to do with it. And then it'll do its auto level. And once that's done, you can try a test print. So I just printed a 0.28 layer height CHEP cube on mine and it came out pretty nice. So that's how you install a Micro Swiss Flowtech hot end on a Creality Ender 3 V3 SE. I hope it helped you out. I want to give a special shout out to all my Patreon supporters. Without their support, this channel wouldn't exist. So thank you so much. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollabuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.